Welcome to the Envelopes Emmy Contender Series. I'm Glenn Whip, and today we're talking to Kyle McLaughlin, who plays, among others, Special Agent Dale Cooper, many other characters in Twin Peaks The Return. Welcome. Hey, thanks, Glenn. Yeah. Really nice to be here. Hard to keep track of the number of uh, characters. <laughs> and um, Yeah, yeah, there yeah. were a few. Um, when you got the script for this, yeah. because you were maybe the only one to see the whole thing. Certainly early on, yeah. Right. Um, what was that? What What was the script? Was it in like, was it? Yeah, it was a giant. Giant 18 hour worth yeah, of 500 thing? plus pages. And I wasn't allowed to take it home with me. I needed to read it there in the, uh, in the studio where they were prepping to shoot. So I sat with a rather large pot of coffee <laughs> and, uh, and, and worked my way Black through it. Black, of course. Black, of course. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, so, yeah. You worked your way through it in mm -hmm. one in city. One yeah, in one go. Yeah. In one go. Now, he, had, David Lynch, had kind of talked to you before this about mm -hmm. what to maybe expect. Mm. He, yeah, he, said there are some things that he needed me to do that were going to be different than the Cooper character. But because it's David, he, and we, spoke, we were speaking about this earlier before we started, he doesn't go into great detail mm -hmm. about what that's going to be. So right. he just said, you'll read, you'll read it. So that's how I came into the character of both Dougie and Mr. C um, through the script. So. Yeah, the thing that I love most about watching 18 hours of this, right. you know, hour at a time, yeah. is that from each hour, I never had any idea what to expect from, <laughs> from chapter to chapter. Mm. Mm. So for you reading that, I can only imagine what that experience was like. You, you, I did have to tie things together and kind of go back and remember as I was working my way through kind of where things were coming from but did you do some google searches yeah no you know <laughs> most of the time i just let david you know he he's he's written it and it, the through line makes complete sense to him mm -hmm. and it's there for a reason i don't necessarily have to understand the 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 direction the the, the world um i need to understand what i what I'm doing in that world as I work my way through. Um, but knowing full well he's going to assemble that in a very particular way mm -hmm. and use whatever myself or any of the actors bring um, the way he wants to. He, he, he will paint, paint with us. You know, he started as a painter, obviously, yes, and did. so that's how. Um, so I've, I've learned, over the years of working with David, I've learned that that's um, a bit of his process, you know. So, I just focus down on what I need to do and make that as real and as believable and as accessible or inaccessible as I need to. But as you're reading this 500 pages and with your coffee, um, and you see the character of Dougie, mm -hmm. and you see Mr. C, Bag Coop, whatever you want to call him, yeah. um, at what point did you start to think, well, where is Special Agent <laughs> Dale Cooper? Yeah. I, because I really wanted a little yeah. Cooper in there too. Yeah. Um, did that ever? What? <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> did you? Um, did you forward? Did you start <laughs> leafing through, going? <laughs> Where did he show up? Yeah. Um, you know, David had said that it's going to be different. You mm -hmm. know, and um, but I too waited. I think six. It was six, the sixteenth hour. I think wasn't until. I think it was. He, it was in the he, hospital. Yeah. Yeah. He was introduced and. Um, yeah, so there were, um, I mean, I will say that in the original reading of it, there were other, um, and I, don't, I don't, don't want to speak too much about this, um, but there were other things that were, that were there that were in place in the script that um, were more of, um, um, let's just say Cooper was a little more present, um, but... Uh, ultimately, in the final edit and when it was assembled, um, I think David felt that it would be better served 
to happen when it did. Mm -hmm. So, uh, without going into great detail. Um, because you can't. Because I can't. But I may have even said too much. Right. <laughs> Probably. Uh, <laughs> but but the, the real excitement was, of course, looking at these other facets of this character, other things that David was asking me to do mm -hmm. um, that, that he needed me to do. Um, and that was, as an actor and as a, and a, f a friend, because David and I are friends, um, was really exciting and, you know, pretty awesome, mm -hmm. you know, to, to have David feel like I was, that I was capable of doing what he needed me to do. Because right. I hadn't really shown that or done that in my career. Um, you had never had a scene where you had an arm wrestling match with with a uh, like large that. hulking guy <laughs> yes. and that you totally just played with him and, and yes. dominated the scene. Yes, that was, uh, that was new, let's just say, among many, many others. Um, funny enough, that scene that you're mentioning, I think in some ways was a bit of a turning point for the character of Mr. C, who was a pretty heinous individual. But f people said at that scene, in that moment, they started to root for Mr. C. They wanted him to actually win this arm wrestling match and he I'm not going to say he became a beloved character but I think people were sort of rooting for him to to emerge victorious which was right. interesting. Well that's that's one of the just amazing things about what Lynch is able to do with this series mm. is that again you never know what to expect. So here's this scene. I think it came early in that episode where it's just like this from a from a different Thing. Right. It's this classic macho arm wrestling. Yeah. Uh, Mr. C has the what are we in elementary school or preschool or something? He has the great line there. <laughs> yeah. and it's this whole thing. Like yeah. in other episodes, it's the Dougie screwball comedy yeah. that's just brilliant. Yeah, no, um, and so much fun to play. And you you mentioned as an actor what what challenges. But yeah, he gave you so much to work with. Oh, with so this. much, and he gave me wonderful actors to work with. I mean, I mean, Naomi Watts as Janie E was perfect, really. Mm -hmm. You know, and every morning when we worked together, we would joke. You know, she had the lion's share of the dialogue, obviously, but right. I didn't have much. So I would come into the trailer and say, well, "Did you learn your lines yet?" And there she would be fervently, you know, working, trying to get these giant paragraphs of, of just dialogue, running dialogue, running thoughts into her brain so she could say them and Dougie would have a one word response or a look. Yeah, Dougie's response is like the last thing she said, Pretty repeating much. it. Pretty much. <laughs> Which I loved. Yeah. I, mean, I like yeah. the work. Yeah, those Dougie um, scenes. But but in a, in a way, I mean, you're still, that's that's a challenge to make that because it's not Dougie. It's, it really is Agent Cooper in yeah. there. Yeah. That's, that's no longer Dougie, yeah. which made me wonder, like, what was the name Naomi Watts character, wonderful woman, mm. what was, Janie. Janie, yeah. What was, why did she marry Dougie in the first place? Where did that come from? Good, good backstory. Well, we see the guy that she fell in love with briefly um, in, um, I can't remember which hour it was, early on, before he explodes and turns into a golden BB, yeah. <laughs> a little tiny golden yes. ball. But he's that kind of overweight, right? Blonde hair. Are you hair, talking about the scene chops. with the prostitute? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, so, so why? See, why did she marry this this guy? He, he must gamble. have been. He must have been a charming go-getter when he was when he was younger, or she saw something in him that was appealing somehow, right. or maybe right. he rescued her from a situation that yeah, maybe. she wanted to get out of. There, um, there are a lot of bad situations in the Twin Peaks universe that yes. people are looking to get out of. Yes, yeah. exactly. He um, was a fun character because I could walk around and sort of pat, they had a big fat suit that I got to wear, I pat my belly and yeah. indulge myself in an occasional donut, which was awesome. And when, when Dougie comes back mm. on, I guess it's the last hour, the last chapter, Yeah. what is that, and, and we just see him show up at the door and he sounds like Dougie. Right. Is it? Doug, what is that? He's, um, he is yet another small shift in the Dougie Cooper continuum. Um, so he's, he's certainly not Dougie complete and he's right. not Cooper complete, but he is, he is an entity that I think is the perfect choice, the perfect person 
to be with Janie E. Okay. So she sort of found, they found each other, I guess. Or That's a whole series in and of itself with, with the you. Mitchum brothers. Oh yeah. And sure. The, and, uh, and the uh, interaction on there. Candy. And the finger sandwiches. Yes. I mean, that's that's a whole that's yes. a whole thing that could be well, part of the fun of working with David. Is you of course you read read this, and you and then you kind of well, I'm trying to visualize how David's going to do this, and I know that whatever I come up with is not going to be anywhere near as fantastic as what he's going to do, and then of course the three girls show up with the blonde bob and the outfits and the whole deal and I'm like well of course that's <laughs> how they would look it's yes. uh, it's perfect in the David's universe you know yeah well you mentioned what what Cooper shows up on that doorstep in Las Vegas the last uh, the last chapter yeah the Cooper that we see is not really Cooper either it no. seems to be a Cooper that's in between Cooper and Mr. C. He certainly has shreds of Mr. C in him, I think. David just said, you know, he's just not quite Cooper. He's a little different. And that was about the extent of the definition. Yeah. Um, so you had to play him a little different. You only, yeah, you only see it when he goes into Judy's for yeah. the coffee, and he orders coffee. Yeah. It's not with the enthusiasm. No, <laughs> no, it's it's a little more. That um, Cooper would have had for it. It's a little. It, it doesn't. The enthusiasm is not there. I agree. Yeah. Um, the, um, but I will say that, it's it's on the page. You know, it's it's in the choice of words. It's in the action. You know, he's, um, as was Cooper, very capable of of physical action and you know wrestling the gun from from the guy and you believe Cooper could have done that as well and this guy does it as well but um, it, it was just as a slightly harder version of the Dale Cooper that we mm -hmm. remember and know um, so these are all these are all slices that just made sense to me mm -hmm. and um, and to David as well so uh, we found them I found them You've had several months to sort of uh, digest that yeah. last hour, yes. last chapter. Yeah. Um, what does it all mean? <laughs> I mean, you did a lot of interviews, like right after you know, right after that, those two episodes, those yeah. final two episodes aired, and and you, um, I think, in honoring the spirit of what David is putting out there, you know, didn't have a whole lot to offer yourself. Right. Um, yeah, in the tradition of, of of following the tradition of David, who who doesn't um, feel the least bit compelled to explain um, what something means or doesn't mean, um, really wants you to the audience to take away with them of your own interpretation, your own feelings about it. Um, we shot those sequences when I come to the house and I meet uh, meet the, the new owners um, very early in the filming, and I remember wanting to get the same sense as you know that the cold shivers in the back when you visit the Palmer house and you realize that Laura is not there and you look up and you see the ceiling fan and some of these um, some of these frames and these images from the original television show and I wanted to I knew we were kind of going into that territory and we captured it I think really really well um, but I was still a little uncertain as to what it was leading to. Um, even the final line, what year is this? And I, and I have my own f sense about where we are and where we may have missed a certain kind of, I don't know what to say, like a c connection or a, 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 a junction somehow. Um, but in terms of sort of spelling out and going back and trying to figure out what it all means, it's like, no, I, all I know is I'm at a place and I'm at a loss. And the Cooper character that we all know and remember 
was, I don't think, ever at a loss. And to see that for the first time was very frightening and disheartening and confusing. Mm -hmm. um, that's not what I played, but it's what I saw when I saw it. It was like, <gasps> oh, now we're in trouble, you know? And you realize that even the, the best man, the best who we think of as Cooper is the best man, maybe he didn't get there. We don't know. Yeah. It's haunting. It is haunting. It's haunting, it's haunting and, yeah, it speaks to, again, this battle of good versus evil and that it's a major thing. evil is going to win sometimes. Yeah. Or um, at least never go away. Or never go away. And, you know, I guess Cooper could have possibly stayed in that Twin Peaks um, Sheriff's Station. It was a very, it was very moving when he said something to the effect, I wish I could, and I'm sure you can remember the line, I wish I could stay here with you or I've yeah. enjoyed, I, I hope to see you again. Yeah, there was a little goodbye right. there. And, yeah. and you as an audience member feel that deeply because you wish that Agent Cooper, as we know him, could spend time with the Twin Peaks sure. friends too, you know. Yeah. But he feels compelled to go. There's unfinished business. Correct. Correct. And particularly with, with obviously with Laura with Laura Palmer. Yeah. And um, you know, and and is it hubris? Is he thinking, you know, like I'm, yeah, I can bit. make it all right. But duty too. That's duty. who he is. Well, it is true. Yeah. There is not a, there is, he's compelled. Um, and we don't s see the, all the, the soul searching that uh, could happen. It's just, this is his job. This is his, what he needs to do. Um, very complex, interesting, intricate. Yeah, yeah. 18 hours of... <laughs> Oh yeah, because if and, through and that, you huh? can, and and well, and and that was one question that, and we have many, and I have, I could spend the next hour talking Let's about do it. various things, but <laughs> many questions from readers as well. Uh huh. Um, Good. As you, as you, you know, the Ask LA Times. One of the most popular questions that people wanted to ask was, well, that got the most likes on Twitter was the question, "What year is it?" That's that's yeah. That seems like the <laughs> <laughs> that's and your new. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, it's going to be your new uh, coffee and cherry have good pie. Coffee right? and hot. It's yeah. What year is it? Yeah. 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 Um, I love it. Good. Well, people but, are thinking. But somebody, um, JC, and this is a good question. How did having social media and interacting with fans make this season of Twin Peaks different for you? Because when the series first aired, mm -hmm. there was there were no. You know, nobody was dissecting television and writing about it and, and really analyzing it mm -hmm. and getting to all. I mean, there's so many great sites on Twin Peaks looking at numerology and, and yeah. every detail. Yeah. What's that like? Um, I thought it was fantastic. I think um, you really sense the passion of the fans and and the 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 way people I think felt compelled to interact with Twin Peaks. So some did it, and I put this on my Instagram a lot, uh, Twin Peak fan art, which I really enjoy. And, uh, and I share that as much as I can as it comes in. So, um, so engaging with the fans in a personal way. Um, and then to read a lot of the, um, just the, the conversations, the writings, the musings, the um, explanations, if you will, of, of people who are compelled to, you know, want to kind of pull it apart and look at it and examine it and, and, and try to reconstruct it and, and have something that they can understand is also interesting because there's some fantastic theories. That there's some fantastic make. theories and, and so many of them each of them makes sense, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's so many great readings yeah. that you can go back and watch this sh series again and think, hmm, well, yeah. war? Yeah. yeah. So, and th those change. So the, it's been fun as a member of the cast to, to, to 
engage with this and and also feel a direct uh, passion um, with the fans you know they they are so so open with their enthusiasm um, or their or not you know or their people frustrations. or frustrations people yeah. miss oh what about this and what about this storyline and that you know why didn't we ever find out about Audrey right you know and so we, what, and people are very yeah. very passionate about that and so just to engage in that way is is um, you feel much I feel more connected mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, with the audience uh, a guy named Bino was asking, how long before you can tell us about season four? <laughs> I have to take that up with Mr. Lynch. Um, I have no... 25 years from idea. now? Yeah. <laughs> I would say I'll be around. I yeah. won't be moving quite as quickly. He'd be 90s. He'd be in his 90s. Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. It's still prop, you know. Oh, we the same. What? <laughs> that was the thing about this season was David Lynch, yeah. the comedic actor. Yeah. Um, and you didn't really get to war have too many scenes with no, him. No, I had a, a difficult scene. I had one when I was as Mr. C trying to convince David and Laura Dern both that I was oh, yeah. Cooper and I'd been away. So I was like, okay. Um, and all I really wanted to do is Kyle was to say, hey, David, what's going on, you know, and be kind of our silly selves, which we are, you know. Um, and it was very, very difficult to um, maintain that disconnect um, with, with David in particular. Laura, too, but with David in particular. How um, close was, was David's FBI agent character to David himself? Oh, he's, you know, not... Uh, not really. I mean, he's um, Gordon is uh, apart from the red wine. I will say that, <laughs> which we all enjoy. Um, he, I, I don't know where Gordon Cole came from, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and it's funny when we interact, some, when we email back and forth. A lot of times he'll he'll do all caps. You know, he's like as if he's Gordon Cole. Kale. He calls me Kale because of. That's a long story, but and I hear his voice in his texting, mm. in the caps. Um, Did you see him on Louis? I didn't. I missed him. Uh, on it's Louis. another great yeah. comedic performance. He's just. Well, did he, you did you want? Oh, go ahead. On, 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 no, on. I, was, I was just saying his timing is impeccable. It's perfect. His, well, that's why he's a great director too. He has to, he understands timing I think better than anyone. But he um, made a short acceptance film where, and I knew he was funny, but it was just remarkable. Mm -hmm. He keeps getting called off <coughs> camera because things are happening off screen. It was like a car accident. I and saw that, horse yeah. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> like, yeah. And I was, I was literally kind of awestruck at just how brilliant it was. Yeah. Uh, Megan wants to know, is there a quality or trait of Cooper's you wish you had? Or are you truly, and she goes on, are you truly one and the same? Yes, we are. <laughs> um, you know, he, he I, I mean, he's got so many great qualities, the Cooper character. Um, and there, I think there are, there are definitely similarities. I think they're obviously magnified. You know, his enthusiasm for trees and, and, and um, coffee. And that, I, I mean, I'm enthusiastic about coffee, too. Um, and his devotion and commitment to his job, you know, it's very... Um, I'm, I'm very envious of that. You know, he, mm. he, really, he really is... He really is committed to it. And I think his, it seems to me that his first impulse with anyone that he meets is, is he immediately can size them up. You know, he has a, an ability to ascertain and sort of look at them and, and he absorbs who they are and what they are. And he's got a tremendous ability to do that. And, and that, that would be... Um, something that, that I admire mm -hmm. a great deal. 
Um, Ivan wants to know, has your opinion of Firewalk With Me changed in light of season three and its connections with the film? Um, well, I don't know how, um, how that would change. I think the, um, um, there are, I know that David has said that he, um, in some ways I felt like this recent Twin Peaks it has, has more in common with Fire Walk with mm -hmm. me, I mm -hmm. think. Um, and some of those actors and the relationships and wh where the story's going as opposed to the, to the, to the initial one, uh, the initial Twin Peaks television series. But um, I've always felt it was pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. um, Firewalk, and um, so no, I, I think it's yeah. I think it's you know it brings up a, a it makes me think about how how David's work is perceived in general, um, and I always feel like there is an, a, a a core group of people that get it immediately, but that it has very long life, and people come to it, um, it's, it's ahead of it. Well, I guess what I'm trying to say, it's a bit ahead of its time. And people come to it in their own, but they, they get there ultimately. And I think that's, that's the case with a lot of David's work. Mm -hmm. it's, it's why it stays around, mm -hmm. it's why it's so relevant, it's so well, why it's so compelling, I think, is it has a very long, a very long life. They're not gonna go away. Kareem wants to know if you could keep one prop, or maybe you have, from the set of Twin Peaks, what would it be? I would keep candy. She would be right now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's get me in trouble. Um, the, um, you know, the thing about, the thing about Cooper was he's, he's not a material guy, you know, so there's not a lot that he would hold on to. Um, you know, there's a black suit, of course. You know, you got that, I guess. Um, Do you have that hanging up in your closet? I don't. No, I don't. I, I, I was happy to say that I, 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 I came pretty, I think I fit into the, I don't know if it was the original one or not, but I fit into whatever they had for me, which I felt good. And they said, oh, yeah, this is from the show. And I was like, well, that's good. That's a good sign. That um, is a good sign. Yeah. 25 years. 25 years later. Yeah. Um, but there, there wasn't... Um, there wasn't a, l a lot of things that, that Cooper had that I would, you know, he's just not a materialistic guy. Well, you know, when we did Dune, I have all that stuff, you know, I got all, I got all the props from that, yeah. um, but not for, not for Twin Peaks. Many people, including Paula, wanted to know, what did Laura whisper in the Red Room? <laughs> Maybe we should just ask what she Cheryl just said. Whispered. Let's get out of here and get a pizza. <laughs> she was. <laughs> um, I don't. You know, it was the red room. It was backward. It was hard to hear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my best answer today. Um, well, let's see. Where where are we here? I just I could keep going with the reader's questions. Yeah. Um, These are good questions. <clears throat> Do you feel that starring in Twin Peaks shaped your acting going forward? So t starring, I guess, in the original show, which you had done quite a bit after, before that, too. Yeah, I'd, I mean, I started work with David. Uh, I'd gone to school and had done a lot of theater, and then I did Dune with yeah. David, and then Blue Velvet. Blue Velvet. And then I did a little sci-fi movie called The Hidden, which is kind of a fantastic rental, actually. And then I worked on The Doors. So I was just kind of bumping along. But Twin Peaks and the, I think particularly the character of Agent Cooper, you know, used to be when I was younger, the idea of being identified with a character, so strongly identified with a character um, that was very particular and unusual and eccentric, was, um, I felt it was, um, you know, I was certainly proud of my work, but it's like, yes, but I'm, I'm a young actor. I can do this and I can do that and think of me as this, you know. So you're compelled to think, okay, that's one thing that I do. And then you want to go on and you want to, you, you know, discover the world, you know. 
and as I've gotten older and I've worked continually and I I look back now on the original character with such fondness and I'm so my level of appreciation for the gift of Cooper mm. um, yeah I've grown up I've matured I guess and you you recognize um, the the value and you cherish that so my whole thinking about Cooper not that I was hated him I didn't by any means I embraced him when I did it but it was there was so much more that I wanted and now recognizing that I'm I'm identified so strongly with that character and that character is beloved and I will that's something I'll be remembered for is actually a pretty amazing special thing so I've I've come to that it's taken me a while but um, I guess you know you, you mature sure so. sure um. We have a lightning round where we ask these questions. Oh, God, okay, good. I mean, yeah. I guess lightning, given this show yeah, and yeah. all the electricity yeah, yeah. going on, is, is a little we dangerous. We don't explode. We have to make sure. <laughs> okay, good. This is the vortex is going to open up over the <laughs> yeah, ceiling. Be very here. careful what we wish for. David um, Lynch. David Lynch could be lurking. He could be. I, I think because because you gave away the scripting at the beginning. You know what I did? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, what was the last show you binge watched? Stranger Things. A little bit late, but we did a quick interview with. Um, we did something. I did something with David Harbor, uh, actors on actors, and I got to spend some time with him, who I really, really like. And so, because I knew I was going to be talking to him one on one, I, I um, it's a show that I wanted to see. You know, it's about getting two things, right? Mm -hmm. So I sat down, started watching, and then of course I'm hooked. And now I've just so I finished them all. So, okay. if you could go back and be on any TV show ever, what would it be? Gilligan's Island, without a doubt. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Come on, you can see me on that island, right? Professor. 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 You've got Ginger. You've got Marianne. You've got Mrs. Howell. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to stop there. I'm really going to get in trouble. <laughs> A lot of people watch TV to unwind. What do you do to unwind? Oh, um, uh, cook. Um, play golf, although I don't really unwind when I play golf because I'm very intent. Um, um, but I also watch. I also sit down and, I, and I'll watch. It's it's a luxury to take time to sit down and watch uh, watch a program, um, and at the same time, it's these are my fellow actors creating extraordinary work, you know. So, um, but I I still feel like. Um, like I'm like it's a luxury mm -hmm. to, to, to watch so you know, there's so much to watch so much good stuff yeah yeah what do you know now that you wish you knew on your first acting job you know it's this is I don't know about this answer but it, the, my job is is about the journey you know mm -hmm. so I knew precisely what I needed to know on my first job um, which was not that much, and now, at my age, and I've done a lot. I've I've learned a lot, and I have a tremendous m amount to to learn, to continue to learn about this process of making, um, creating a character, and bringing them to life, and doing the character justice in the in the arena of filmmaking or television or theater. And every time I do a, I start a new project, I, I approach it with, God, am I, is it going to work? Am I going to remember? Am I going to bring my best? You know, and that's always been there. I mm -hmm. just, I think, the, the organism, hopefully, has grown. You know what I mean? So I'm able to do more, do my best. Um, and I just feel like the growth will continue. Hopefully, the growth will continue. I, I expect it till you know they lay me down and send me on my way. <laughs> well, thanks. Uh, that that is, it makes me want to start like getting into all the issues of mortality on, oh, yes. on this last season of Twin Peaks. Oh, but yeah, they were. Uh, yeah, um, some sad things. That's another thing that just really runs through that that season. Yeah, and it's and it's beautiful, and it's gives oh, you heartbreaking, yeah, heartbreaking and too. Yeah, yeah, but 
yeah, it, it's you go through in the credits, it'd be in memory of almost yeah. every episode. Yeah, yeah, that was, um, that's hard, hard to watch, you know, the, so it's, it's, it's a, they live on, people live on, Miguel lives on, Catherine right. lives on, but they're not here, you know, so, you know, it's the, it's, it's the memory, you know, that's how people live on it. And we actually have them to watch as well. So, yeah. and we can talk about it and we tell stories, you know, this is about the stories, the remembering. Yeah. And that's how they live on. Well, it's, it was a great, um, great gift, a great, you know. Thank you. Great way to, um, to, to pay tribute and, and to, to have those memories with this last season. So yeah. thanks for coming in today. What a pleasure. Really and, nice um, to talk with you. Yeah, thanks. Um, for more of these Emmy conversations, you can go to latimes.com. Thanks for watching today.